Hi right, guys, quick question. You just got your tank full and you are headed to the local quarry to go make a dive, or maybe out in the ocean, wherever it may be. Um, the question is, how long does this tank last? Is it gonna last you 30 minutes? Is it gonna last you an hour? Is it gonna last you two hours? Well, there's a lot of variables that go into that question specifically that's gonna help you determine how long that tank's gonna last. Um, of course, one of those major variables is your surface air consumption rate or your sac rate. In today's video, we're going to answer a question we get a lot between, say, a sac rate and an RMV rate. What is the difference and which one should actually be calculated before you go dive? What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be reviewing what a sac rate or surface air consumption rate is. We're also going to review what an RMV is, a respiratory minute uh, volume is. But we're also going to be answering a question by Deco Lounge Scuba where he asked a question specifically about when calculating a sac rate, why do we only do it by pressure? versus doing it by cubic footage or by volume and just a short answer here is we do both and let me explain why it is we do both or I'm hoping to explain in this video why it is we do both but before we get into that let's talk about what a sac rate actually is a sac rate is simply a surface air consumption this is how much air you consume here at the surface but it's an umbrella term all right so sac rate is going to actually be an umbrella term. It's going to mean many different things. It's how much pressure you consume here at the surface. It's almost how much, or it's also how much cubic footage you consume here at the surface. And it's very important that we calculate it in both forms. Now, when you plan a dive, you're only going to use one form. And that one form is RMV, respiratory minute volume. All right. But we're also going to calculate it as its surname as surface air consumption, which is the pressure. So this is going to be the volume, which we need to plan dives. This is going to show us underwater a real time uh, number as far as how long our air is going to last us. And I'll show you a great example at the end of this video how that works. But let's do a quick review of how we calculate your sac rate. All right, guys, just as a quick review of how we calculate our sac rate, remember there's two formulas that we're going to use here. The first one's going to calculate pressure. The second one will calculate cubic footage, but we always have to start on the pressure side. So the way that we do this, there's three variables you need. You need to know how much air you used on a given dive. That's simple. How much did you start with? How much did you end you with? What's the difference in between? That difference is the air used. You also need to know depth in atmospheric pressure. Let's say we were at a depth of 33 feet. That would be two atmospheres. And then, of course, time at depth. Let's just make up a number here, say 30 minutes. So once I've got those three variables here, I can simply divide them out. Let's say I used 1,000 PSI at a depth of 33 feet or two atmospheres, and I was there for 30 minutes. You simply divide it out. 1,000 divided by 2 divided by 30. That would give you a sac rate, a breathing rate calculated in pressure of 16 PSI per minute at the surface. Now remember, because we converted depth into atmospheric pressure, that takes our sac rate and brings it back to the surface, which sac rate stands for surface air consumption. So with a breathing rate of this, we're breathing 16 PSI per minute. But now we have to calculate into that to the RMV rate, and that's a very simple calculation as well. All right, guys, now for part two of this, we're going to look at how we calculate the RMV, and we're going to talk a little bit about why it's important as well. So the RMV still takes three variables, just like sac rate did. So with RMV, we're going to need our actual sac rate, which we've already calculated. You're going to need the size of cylinder that you're going to be using for your next dive. In this case, I'm just using an 80. And then you need the working pressure of that cylinder as well, which in this case is 3,000 PSI. Now, as far as the formula goes, all you do is you take the cubic footage of the cylinder, divide it out by its working pressure. In this case, it's going to give me 0 0.026. And then I'm going to multiply my sac rate to that. So 16 PSI a minute 
times 0 0.026. That's going to give me an RMV rate down here of 0 0.42 cubic feet a minute. In short, what that means is, is this particular diver is breathing less than half a cubic foot a minute here at the surface. Now, this is very important to that diver, to you, to any diver out there, because it's going to help us plan dives. If I'm going, say, on a dive, and let's say that dive requires 63 cubic foot of gas, okay? That's how much gas I need for a specific dive. And let's say I choose an aluminum 80. Well, I'm not gonna be able to use all of the gas in that aluminum 80 because some of it's gonna be for a reserve purposes. So how much workable gas in aluminum 80 is actually usable? Well, it's only 53 cubic feet. So if I need 63 cubic feet to make the dive or 63 uh, cubic feet of gas to make the dive, I'm not going to be able to do it on that aluminum 80 because only 53 cubic foot of it is usable. The rest is for reserve. So knowing how to calculate your RMV is going to help you determine which cylinder is going to be best for you for any given dive. And it's really important that you as a diver can do that. Well, if the RMV is so important, why do we still focus on pressure alone when we come down to our sack rate? Well, to answer that question, let me take you downstairs and show you a practical way of how sack is just as important in pressure as it is in cubic foot. All right, guys, so trying to answer the question, why is it important that we still calculate pressure as well when we're calculating our sack rate? It's really simple. If we look here in front of me, this is a set of doubles here. This happens to be my set of doubles. And what do you'll notice? There's two aluminum 80s. They're manifolded together. Everything's rigged up. And if I turn these cylinders on, you will notice that they're full. They're at 3,000 PSI. Now, did you see it? Did you catch what I showed you? has nothing to do with the cylinders. It's this guy right here. It's the gauge. Now, whether you use, say, a digital computer or an analog gauge like this, that's the only way that we know how to measure how much gas we have in here. Now, we cannot measure, whether it's analog or digital, the cubic footage without doing math. And nobody really wants to do math in their head underwater, but what we can measure is pressure. And I can measure the pressure of these cylinders by simply looking at a gauge. So if you were trying to calculate your RMV to where you say, okay, I breathe, say, 0 0.42 cubic feet a minute, you're going to have to do math underwater every breath you take every minute to calculate how much cubic footage you've still got left however if you calculate your sack using psi or bar whatever system you want to use you can actually judge how much air is in your cylinder by simply looking at the pressure and you can say okay based off my breathing rate my pressure should be around this amount at a given point in this dive and it's very easy to do with an analog gauge or a digital gauge versus trying to calculate cubic footage in your head because we don't measure cubic footage underwater. So guys, just as a quick recap, what did we talk about? We talked about sack rates or surface air consumption. And remember, sack rates is broken up into two different parts. So really sack is kind of an umbrella term here. It's got many different meanings. The first part of it is how much pressure or bar do you breathe per minute at the surface? And the second one is how much cubic footage. And we actually have to calculate both out to get the answer that we need. So obviously you're going to calculate your RMV to see what size cylinder you need for a given dive, but you're also going to calculate your sack and pressure or bar because we actually have a gauge underwater that's going to help us keep track of that and we can actually time out how long the cylinder lasts based off that gauge as well. But guys, I really hope that's uh, very interesting you guys. And Deco Lounge Scuba, thank you for reaching out. That's a great question. We get that question from all different types of students, from open water students to tech students all the way up to our instructor level students. And it's something that can be confusing because sack rate is kind of an umbrella terminology. If you look it up, most sack rate calculators are simply going to say you breathe this much pressure, but the reality that sack rate calculator is calculating how much RMV or how much cubic footage you're breathing as well. So being able to differentiate between the two, but understanding why they're both important. One plans the dives for us. One is a real-time number that we look at underwater as well. But guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Definitely stay tuned. Our very next video, we are going to be talking about scuba umbrella terms and why people get confused when instructors use certain terminology. But that's going to do it for today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.